unconditional love doesn't mean unconditional tolerance. I want to say that again. Unconditional love doesn't mean unconditional tolerance. And this is not just for intimate relationships, y'all. This is holistically all across the board from your friends to your relationships, to your family, to your whoever it may be. Some of us think that unconditional love means that we have to continue to keep people in our life. We have to continue to allow people to hurt us. We got to continue to allow people to take advantage of us. And I'm going to tell you something. Some of you are so afraid to step on toes, so afraid to step on toes and rightfully so, right? You're doing it rightfully so. Some of you are so afraid to step on toes that you keep yourself in situations, in toxic environments that's damaging your soul. Some of you are so afraid to be viewed as cold hearted. So you stay in situations that leave you broken hearted. I want to say this again. Unconditional love doesn't mean unconditional tolerance. Just because you love someone, just because you love people, doesn't mean that you have to keep accepting toxic from people. Just because you love someone doesn't mean you have to keep accepting toxic from someone. It has to get to a point in your life where you say, man, I got to learn how to love some people from a distance. You can't keep allowing someone to steal your peace. You can't keep allowing someone to rob your peace of mind. You can't keep allowing someone to make you feel like you're worthless. You can't keep allowing someone to do these things because you want to say unconditional love. You can unconditionally love somebody from a distance. You can unconditionally love somebody without giving them access to your heart again and again and again. You can unconditionally love someone without giving them your trust again and again and again. If somebody keeps doing the same things to you, it is not on them. It is on you at some point because they have shown you who they are. But you've allowed the whole stigma of unconditional love. You allowed the whole stigma of, oh, give somebody another chance. You allowed the whole stigma of, oh, that, that means you're cold hearted. Let me tell you something, man. You choosing you ain't cold hearted. You demanding your worth ain't cold hearted. And I'm going to tell you right now, when you choose you, you're going to see how people really feel about you. When you do what's right for you, you're going to see how people really feel about you. People can say all the things, oh, I love you, I care for you, I want to see the best for you. But as soon as you choose what's best for you, and it don't involve them because it's not best for them to be a part of your thing, you're going to see how they really feel about you. As soon as you demand your worth, you're going to find out who was really there to use you. Because it's going to show as soon as you make people keep the promises that they make to you, you're going to see how full of they are. But the problem is we don't demand that. The problem is we don't stay loyal to ourselves first. The problem is we don't stay loyal to our principles first because we feel like we should give people multiple chances and chances and chances. I don't believe that you ever should hate someone. I don't believe that you ever should stop loving someone. But I do believe that you should limit access to people who are doing nothing but taking from your life. If you had somebody that stole money from you over and over and over again, why are you gonna keep giving them access to your money? If you have somebody that is taking your car and stolen your car, why are you going to keep giving them access to your car? Because you unconditionally love them? You got to realize and figure this out, man. There comes a point when you have to love someone and people from a distance, and that's okay. It don't make you cold-hearted. It don't make you stuck up. It don't make you selfish. The only people that are going to make you feel selfish for doing what's best for you are people that were probably trying to use you in the first place, and that's facts. Unconditional love doesn't mean unconditional tolerance. Unconditional love, and I want, to, I want you to understand that, get that, doesn't mean unconditional tolerance in your life. When you choose you, you're going to see how people really feel about you. All of that talk that I'm your brother, I'm your sister, I got your back no matter what, that no matter what comes with a fine parenthesis that you don't see. No matter what, but really it means that if I'm not a part of it, then I ain't going to want to support you. I ain't going to want to be around you. I'm going to talk bad about you. I ain't going to lift your name up because we have so many selfish people in this world that say they for you, but really they for themselves. They only for you for what they can take from you. And once they can stop taking from you, you're going to realize how they really feel about you. Once the benefits end, you're going to see their loyalty stops. You're going to see their support stops. You're going to see all of those things. So I want you to understand this truth. I believe in unconditional love. I do. But there's certain conditions that I'm not keeping people around my life. 
I will love you from a distance. I will support you from a distance. If you really need me, I probably still will be there because I know my heart. But I'm not going to give somebody chance after chance after chance after chance to take advantage of my life. I'm not going to give somebody chance after chance after chance to ruin my soul because this is what happens, y'all. And this is what happens. When you keep giving somebody access to your life or people to your life, I'm going to tell you what happens. Your trust gets ruined. And then you make people pay for mistakes that they didn't make. You stop trusting people. You stop loving on people. You really become cold-hearted. And you turn into a person that they turned you into because you kept allowing someone access to your life, access to your money, access to everything. You got to get out the business of, of enabling people enabling people. So like I said, when you choose you, when you demand your worth, you're going to see who really use you. When you say, you know what? Nah, I ain't going to be a part of that. Nah, that don't make sense business-wise for me. We can talk about business too. Nah, that don't make sense business-wise to me. Nah, you know what? Hey man, you owe me this. We signed a contract and you owe me this. Hey, you know what? Nah, this is what we, this is what we promised that, that we would do. You know what I mean? So then when you demand your worth, when you chase down what's owed to you, you're going to see like, damn, these really people, these are really people that was out to use me. And then when you bring it up to them, they're going to try to make you feel guilty for calling them out on ABS. When you make people keep the promises that they make to you. So a lot of people keep promise. Oh, man. Y'all ain't feeling me on this one. It's too real for some of y'all. It's too real for some of y'all, man. That's why we keep repeating the same cycle of hurt, the same cycle of depression, the same cycle of mental health. You got to release. You got to protect your worth. You got to protect your heart. You got to protect your life. You can't just let anybody in your life. You can't just let anybody stay in your life. That needs to be earned. It needs to be earned. But you got to get to a point where you make people keep the promises that they make to you. You make them stand on what they standing for. Because it's easy for people to give you BS when they want something from you. They're going to promise you the world. They're going to show you everything that's right. They're going to give you the perfect presentation. They're going to say everything that's right. They're going to call you every single day. They're going to they gonna look the part to take advantage of your life. And then when it's time to deliver on their promises, they disappear. Once they got what they want. So you need to start keeping people accountable with the promises they make to you. And you're going to see a lot of people in your life are probably full of BS. A lot of people in your life talk a good game, but they ain't about that life. They ain't about that life. So don't get it confused, man. Unconditional love doesn't mean that you got to stay in unbearable situations. You got to stay in toxic situations. You got to stay in toxic environments. I love people in my life right now unconditionally that I will never place my life around ever again, ever again. My love for them. If I seen them out in trouble, I would help them because I love them. But I refuse to give them access to certain things in my life because I will be a fool to think that things have changed when the consistency has shown me in the past who they are. Who they are. And some of us, we believe what we want to believe because we allow our good heart to see the good in everybody. And I get that. We allow the small things people do. The small things people do to keep you in a situation, right? The small things they do, the small things they do right. Makes you blind to everything they do or wrong. The little, the, the little bit of, of pleasure makes you forget about all the pain. Nah, those days are over, man. Hold people accountable. Hold people accountable to the same things they will hold you accountable to. Because I guarantee... If you owe them money, they'll be at your front door, right? They'll be demanding their stuff. I guarantee if you gave them a promise, they will be wanting what you promised them. So stop, stop allowing people to make you feel guilty for choosing you. Because I promise you, when you choose you, I said this earlier, I'm going to say it again. When you choose you, listen to me, you can quote this. I hope somebody quotes it. When you choose you, that's when you're going to see how they really feel about you. There's a lot of people that say they want the best for you, but that only means if it's the best for them. There's a lot of people that say, I want to see you at your best. That only means I only want to see you at your best if I'm involved with it. But people who truly love you want to see the best you, even if it means they ain't a part of it. Even if it means they don't benefit from it. They don't benefit from it. People that want to see the best me, they ain't got to be around me. And they still want to see the best me. Because they understand I'm going on a journey in my life that's doing what's best for me. That's the true unconditional love. That's real unconditional love. That's real unconditional love. There's people in my life literally that I cannot stand, that I still have unconditionally love for, and I still want to see them do their best.
Because I will never wish depression. I will never wish hard times and struggle on anybody. But I need you guys to feel this message, man. I'm out here in nature. I guess the energy is high out here. It's my first time out in nature in a while. Probably much, pretty much the whole winter. I mean, I was just out in Sedona. But out here back on my trails, man, where I feel so connected. But this kept going through my head, going through my head. And I was like, man, I want to bring a nature vibe, protect your peace vibe. But this energy kept coming up, kept coming up. Because I know there's so many people that's in depression because what they keep accepting. They're in depression because of those things. They're not choosing what's best for them. They're not making people stand on their promises. They're not demanding their worth everywhere in your life, your job, your friends, your family, your relationships, everywhere in your life. You're not demanding your worth. You make people make, see, you got to realize a society that wants to use, they're going to make you feel like you ain't worth what you're worth so they can take advantage of you. They're going to make you feel like you ain't worth what you're worth. But understand, when somebody comes into your life, they see your value. They see your value. They just want to put you on wholesale. They want to make you think you wholesale so you sell yourself for cheap. So they can take advantage of that. Demand your worth. Demand it. But like I tell you at the end of every single video, it all starts with you. And... Don't let make people, don't let people make you feel guilty, man. I know I say this a lot, but so many people feel like, dang, man, they call me cold hearted. Dang, they told everybody else that, that I did this, that I did that. Let me tell you something, man. <laughs> Those type of people, life, karma, the circle of life going to come back for them. You feel me? You ain't got to explain yourself to the world, man. Let your character speak. Let time reveal. Because those are the same people going to be like, oh, man, he ain't about his business. Oh, man, he, he did me wrong. He gonna, they're going to paint a picture to the world that you wrong when they did you wrong. Because those are people who have no self-esteem. Those are people who can't stand on by, they can't stand up. They can't operate their life by themselves. They got to attach themselves to people to make them feel more valuable. That's what they do. And then they make the world feel like you the bad person. They do everything right to everybody else too, by the way. So people can be like, man, this person is a great person. So... They must, what they must be saying about that person is true. I know a lot of y'all feel that. They'll present everything right to everybody else because they want everybody else to think they, the, they good and you must be the one. So they go over the top to please everybody else because in everybody else's mind now, dang, this person's doing all these things for me. Then they must be good. But then they find out over time that this person was full of bullshit. Yeah. Unconditional love, man, doesn't mean unconditional tolerance. And the truth is, what you tolerate, what you tolerate in your life will control your life. A lot of us are not in a place where we want to be, not because we're not capable, not because we're not great. It's because we tolerate things we shouldn't tolerate. We tolerate things we shouldn't tolerate. Raise those standards, man. Raise those principles. Say no more often. Say nah, uh And don't feel guilty for it. Because I promise you, the same people that's making you feel guilty for it, they choosing them. They choosing them. Ooh, it's money over here. I appreciate y'all. I appreciate y'all for rocking with me. I appreciate y'all for tuning in. And uh, I know this message might not be for everybody, but I think it is. You share this with your kids at school. You share this with your kids. You know, the earlier people can learn this, the better off their life will be. Better off their life will be. You know, the definition of unconditional love, man, to me, to me, is when somebody really needs you, you're still there for them. You know what I mean? Like I said, if somebody called my phone, they really need me, I'll still be there because I got that unconditional love. But I learned that just because I got unconditional love doesn't mean I had to keep my life around that person. Doesn't mean I have to engage with that person daily. Doesn't mean I have to be in that environment. Doesn't mean I got to stay around that. Don't have to. I don't have to. So don't allow people make you, like, don't allow people to put that faith, faith talk on you. You know, that happened to me before people, oh, well, you, well, if you love God, then, then you got to accept every. Don't allow people to do that to you. Don't allow people to pull that on you because people will. People will put the faith talk on you, right? I love God. I love people, but I also love myself too. And I ain't going to allow anybody in my life to keep disrespecting me. I'm trying to be like Christ, all right? I'm trying to be. 
But I refuse to allow disrespect in my life because I know what that leads to for me. I know vividly if I allow these things in my life, I know what that's going to lead to for me. It's going to lead me to a dark, depressed place, a rock bottom. And I know God doesn't want me at rock bottom. So I treat people with respect, but I demand my respect. And I refuse to stay in things that promote disrespect. You know what I mean? So I want to share that with y'all. Hopefully this touched your heart below. Join my text community. I know a lot of you are part of it. Uh, if you want daily inspiration, I actually sent out this text today about this topic. So uh, join my text community. I send out daily inspiration. A lot of things that I do, like Zoom calls that are free, that only the text community knows about, merchandise, only text community knows about events. I'm going to start doing rehab hikes, rehab in the wild, where I go to cities and just invite y'all for free to come out here and kick it when we have conversations like this, talk about things. But that's only going to be to my text community. So make sure you're a part of it. Um, and shout out to everybody who's doing the self-worth method. Um, it's live right now. It's incredible. Unfortunately, it's not available for anymore, but it will be available at a later time. So yeah, man, this live will be saved for sure. It will be saved for sure. This live will be saved for sure. Such a good message. Thank you, Miss Virginia. I appreciate you. I I, thank you. Brittany says going on with my life right now. Yeah, man, it happens to a lot of us. You know, it happens to a lot of us. And, you know, you got to just keep being a man or woman of character of faith, of principles, you know, because people will, like I said, people will try to make you feel like you're a bad person for doing what's right for you or just for doing what's right in general. You know, that's why I always tell people it's principle for me. I don't, I get out of my emotion and I go to principle. What's the facts about the situation? Because I know the facts is the truth. Emotion sometimes can lie to you, but what's the principle? What's the principle? So if you promise me something and didn't deliver on that something, I have a right. I have a right to have an issue with you. If you promise me something, I found you full of, I have a right to not be involved with you anymore. And you shouldn't feel a certain type of way. I should be the one feeling a certain type of way. If I demand my worth and I realize that you tried to sell me for less and you tried to use me and I feel a certain type of way, I have a right to feel a certain type of way. But we live in a world where people make you feel like you cold hearted for that. If you let people take advantage of you, they will. And I learned that this year more than ever. I've done so many things for people that would never return the favor. But that's why I'm still blessed. That's why I continue to be blessed. That's why my kids would be blessed. I understand that part of it too. I let God fight my battles. Vengeance is the Lord. I understand that. But I am going to start. But, I, but in the same sense as that vengeance is the Lord. But demanding my respect is mine. And I'm going to do that. So hope that helped y'all a little bit, man. I'm just out here. Wanted to show y'all some nature. I really wish I could have came over here with like some protect your peace vibes. I really wanted to talk about too, about um, just really releasing the things in your life that need to be released. Uh, but maybe we'll do that some other day. Just when I press live, this strong urge to talk about what I talked about uh, came, came on my spirit and from the comments, it looks like a lot of y'all needed this message. So I'm glad I listened to my heart today and just went with what my spirit was calling me to talk about. And, you know, it's just, I'm going to walk with y'all and talk with y'all for a little bit longer until I get to the part where I'm going to run back. Man, it's a red bird. It's so crazy. So I feel like that's my mother speaking to me. We have a little thing with a red bird when, we was, when I was little. Um, we lived in Louisiana and this red bird would always come to a, Really, it was my room when I was a baby, but our guest room uh, window, and it would just always be there. Like it would peck on the window. It would just be there, sing, and we always had an inside joke with this red bird because this red bird would just randomly be there. I, we didn't see any red birds anywhere else, but it would be there, and it was always kind of a connection with me and my family with this red bird. And so I'm reminded, you know, so much of my mom's love. Um, when red birds come out of nowhere, in which that happened out here in nature. So I feel our presence more than ever, man. It's coming up on a year of her passing. So, you know, this is her spirit too. This is my mom, something she stood for a lot. Like my mom was a very religious woman, God-fearing woman, um, probably one of the, yeah, the best, 
one of the most God-fearing people I know. I mean, even during our struggle, she was still praising God when she had every right. I won't say every right not to because we should praise God more in our struggle. But you know what I mean? Like when it's so easy to lose faith, she still kept faith and she still kept honoring God, even in the midst of her struggle. And here I go talking about something else. So I'm going to just stay on this. Maybe somebody needs this too. Um, and even in the midst of her struggle, you know, she was still praising and honoring God. And, you know, it just reminds me um, that God is still with us, man, as we know this, but God is still with us even in our hardest times. When we feel like he's not there, he's near. You know, he's closest to the broken heart and he rescues those that are crushed in spirit. And that's something I needed a lot this year in my life. A lot this year in my life, somebody I needed. And, you know, my mother, she was the one where I get my spirit of demanding respect, telling you like it is. You know, I got my dad and my mom like perfect. Like my dad's a, a gentle, kind person. Now he don't play neither when it comes to certain things, but my dad is overly kind as his spirit. And I admire him for that. My mother, she's kind, but she's like the opposite. She's going to tell you what it is and how it is. And she's going to let you know how she feel. And so I have my moments of like both of them. And today it was so my mom's spirit because she always would tell me, you know, don't let people take advantage of you. Don't let people use you. Because when you allow those things, it becomes you. And you think that you think that's what you deserve. You know, a lot of us, a lot of us start to settle. Right. And I always say settling, settling leads to suffering. That's why I'm so adamant about like releasing things from your life. I'm so adamant about things like today, because this is the things that lead to depression. It's the things that we allow in our life and keep in our life. It's the sickness that we keep in our life and we keep in our soul. And settling is a sickness. I want you to look at that as a sickness. It's a sickness that leads to suffering in your soul. Settling is a sickness that leads to suffering in your soul. Settling is a sickness that leads to suffering in your soul. Somebody write that out. Settling is a sickness that leads to suffering in your soul. Because when you start to settle for less, when you accept less in your life, you become that. You become less in your life. You become less in your life. And then you get to a place where you settled for so long because this is the deal, right? Some of us think, oh, it's just, you know, it's all right. You know, I, I just settled a little bit. It's okay. And that might be true, right? We all had our settling moments, right? I had settling moments this year in my life. But I refuse to keep allowing myself to settle in every area of my life. I'm not just talking about externally, even internally. I refuse to allow myself to settle because I know that leads to suffering. You settle with your health, you're going to lead to suffering with your health. You settle with your relationships, you're going to lead to suffering in your relationships. It's just how it works. You settle in your job, you're going to lead to suffering in your job. You settle with your worth, you're going to lead to suffering with your worth. And so, so many of us, we like think, oh, this is just not that bad. And then it becomes us. And then we get to a place and I know I'm not talking to myself. I've been here, but I know somebody can fill me with this. We get to a place where we don't even know who we are anymore. We don't even know who we, we are a shell of ourselves, And it's because we stop honoring our principles, our worth. We set none that we set negotiables in our life. We negotiated our boundaries we accepted things we know we shouldn't accept it, but we did it. Maybe it's because our emotions, because of voids in our life. And we get to a place where, like, dang, like, how did, how did I get here? How did I get here? You know? So I'm going through things in my life right now, to be honest, that even business stuff where, you know, that first thing where I said making people keep the promises where I've had people promise me things, right? I had people promise me things. And this is me trying to help people out. You know, this is my kind heart that I always feel like God's rewards anyway, but helping people out just to realize that, you know, people try to take advantage of certain situations. And when you demand your worth, they try to make you feel guilty for demanding your worth, for demanding and making them keeping the promises, making them keep the agreements that they signed. And I could talk about companies that I've been a part of this past year that I'm not a part of, that I got to chase down things when all I've done was deliver. And a lot of times too, man, this is just in life in general. It's so funny that people will call you difficult. I can't tell you how many times that when it came to even business or just came to personal things, when people call myself or somebody on my team difficult because we're just wanting what everybody agreed upon. <laughs> people will call you difficult when they don't want to honor their word. People will call you difficult 
when they don't want to keep their promises. People want to call you difficult when they don't want to stand on what they say that they stand for. So if that's difficult, well, damn it, I'm going to be very difficult <laughs> because I refuse to turn my back on something that we agreed upon. And that goes holistically in your life. Make people eat their words, not a negative way, but make people eat their words. That's why I always tell people, man, are you sure about this? Are you sure you can deliver on this? Because it's the expectation that's now been set that needs to be met. You got to have these conversations with people because I'm telling you, people will present you the most beautiful thing in the world. People will present you paradise. People will present you paradise. But will give you pain. People will present you paradise. But will give you rock bottom. And too many of us, we fall for the presentation, how they look, how they talk, what they say, how they keep your word. I, I've had people call me every single day and tell much I care about me. And when I choose me, I don't hear from them. I've had people that I literally have put on and helped. But when I say, hey, man, I'm going to do this for me right now because I lost so much looking out for everybody else this past year when I was going through my depression. I don't hear from those people no more. And those people will paint a picture to the world like, oh, man, so-and-so ain't this, so-and-so ain't that, so-and-so this or that, because they want to protect themselves. They want to protect their character that sucks. You know, so don't allow those things, man, to put you in a place of depression, to put you in a place of anger. Because he who angers you controls you, right? But by... By God, dong, damn it. You, you, you better demand your worth, man. You better demand your worth. And don't let people just get away with things, man. Don't let people just get away with things. And don't worry about what people say about you and call you difficult, call you cold hearted, call you all these things. Just let the facts speak because the facts will always win at the end of the day. Remember that the facts and the truth will always prevail. Never forget that. Never Forget that. The facts and the truth will always prevail. You can sleep at night. When people do you wrong, there's times in my life where I've done things, whether it be to my parents, things I shouldn't have done, that bother me, bother my soul. And I said, man, I don't like feeling like this. So you better believe when people are doing you wrong, doing you dirty, they ain't sleeping at night. They ain't sleeping at night. Their soul isn't resting. Their soul isn't resting. It's had more stress to their life that leads to sickness. So don't worry about it. Worry about it, but don't worry about it like that. Because at the end of the day, you got peace in your soul. You can sleep at night. And the truth will always reveal itself and everything, everything will work out. I've had people who stole from me that I would give my last to. I have people who have talked about me that I have put on. I have, I've had people in my life, you know, spread rumors that I would defend their name. It's life, man. All you can control is you, what you accept and what you do, what you give and what you accept. Those are two things you always can control. Remember that. What you give and what you accept are two things you are always in control of. What you give and what you accept. There's a lot of other stuff in the world you can't control, but what you give and what you accept are always in your control. And when you get clear on both of those things, when you get clear on what you're not accepting, when you get clear on what you're giving, you will live a more powerful life. When you know exactly what to give to fuel your soul, what to give to make the world better. I always think in threes. This is my threes that I think of. And I think in, I always think about this for myself. Peace of mind, peace on earth, peace in soul. That's my trilogy for, the, for protecting my peace in my life. I know in order for Trent Shelton be, to become the most mentally stable and healthy is those three things. Peace on earth, what does that mean? Peace on earth is about what I give to this place. Am I making this world a better place? Today, this is peace on earth. I'm making someone's life better right now. I know I am. Peace on earth, whether I, be, whether I pick up a piece of trash on the trail, it doesn't matter. Peace on earth, I'm contributing to peace on earth. My purpose, what I'm giving, I'm in control over that. 
this is session right here. We didn't win from everything. This is session right here. This part, man. So I think about that peace on earth. I evaluate that every single day. Then I think about peace of mind, right? Am I doing things that promote peace of mind in my life, right? Am I doing the right things? Am I, am I being honorable in certain ways? Have I made mistakes? You know, am I, Am I being there for those that need me to be, right? That, that goes to my peace of, peace of mind. And then, and that's what you give and what you accept. And then peace and soul for me is what I'm doing right now. Out in nature, meditating this morning for 20 minutes. Those things. And I know if I can do well in those three areas, I'll experience more peace in my life. And ultimately, inner peace is the greatest success in the world. And remember, success is not a destination. It's a decision. Success doesn't have an arrival point. It's a decision. You're successful because you decide to be. I'm successful today because I decided to give myself things in those three areas. Success. Some of us think, oh, I'll experience success when I get there, when I get to the, the goal, when I get to the destination. No, success is a decision. And you have the power to decide every single day. I want peace in my life. Peace is my priority. When I'm more peaceful, when I have peace of mind, peace in soul, peace on earth, peace around me, then my life is lived in a, a better, beautiful way. Let me show you all this climb right quick. This is called... Let me show y'all this. I know some of y'all ain't care, but goat, the goat killer climb. Well, I'm not a goat, but I'm about to climb it. <laughs> so yeah, you know, get out, get out in nature, y'all. Get out in nature. And, you know, people have been hearing me say this for the last, what, probably seven years. Nature heals. Nature is God's natural medicine for the soul. Some of us we can't even go through those things and, and evaluate those things because we have so much noise in our life. We never take time to disconnect. We never take time to do things for ourselves. We never take time to practice mental care and self-care. You don't have to necessarily run out here. Maybe just a walk. Maybe you find a bench and just sit out. Get around life. Nature is a natural healer and it's available to you. It's available to you. Um, it's changed my life. It's changed my frame of mind. Um, it's allowed me to experience life in a whole different light. And I just wish that more people would, would get out on the, on the trails because when I'm on these trails and just talking to y'all and when I'm not on here on live talking to y'all, it's like nothing exists outside these trails. You know, nothing exists. It's just me and my thoughts. And my releases that I got to release and the things I got to let go of, the things I got to build on to. And um, it's God's natural medicine for the soul. I think it's one of God's best creations. You know, God's an artist and I believe nature is one of his greatest masterpieces. So I'm about to get off of here, man. I know I talked about a lot. I know I got off topic a lot. But I just like to serve you guys, man, with just different things that are on my heart. And hopefully it serves you in some way. But to wrap this up, I'll go back to my first point. Unconditional love doesn't mean unconditional tolerance. You know, it doesn't mean just because y'all been knowing each other for 10 years, 12 years, 15, 30 years. I always say, don't let the history keep you in the misery. Don't let it what, what was make you blind to what is, you know? And I ain't just telling you to kick people out your life because that ain't what I'm about. I don't believe we should do life alone, but I am telling you, don't keep toxic in your life. I am telling you that. So people make mistakes, but some people choose to make the same mistakes and uh, place more value on the same mistakes over and over and over again because that goes from a choice to I mean that goes from a mistake to a choice 
right? People will choose to treat you a certain type of way and you can choose to accept it or not. And I just refuse to accept certain things. If they don't like it, they don't like it. I got a responsibility to be the best me for those that need me to be. And if me being, yeah, man, my connection was getting out. So that's my sign, man. Like I always tell you, it all starts with you. Thanks, Eva. Thanks, Talala. Don't let the, Carissa, don't let the history keep you in the misery. Facts. I'm doing good. Thanks for asking. But uh, it all starts with you. I appreciate you guys. I'll be checking in with you guys sometime this week. Uh, make sure you follow me on TikTok, too, because I'll spend a lot of time on TikTok. Uh, at Trent Shelton on TikTok. Make sure you follow me there. Instagram at Trent Shelton. TrentShelton.com. New podcast released today. A powerful podcast. If you're struggling with perfection and depression, um, this is the podcast that I would listen to. Um, episode 102. Um, I forgot the title, but it's today's episode, the latest episode. So listen to it, share it if you can. Uh, free content for you. All right, I try to give as much free things as I can for you to use. And uh, make sure you're part of that text community because we do a lot of cool things with the text community. And just bare minimum, I mean, you're going to get a text every day that I feel like will help your soul a bit.